Nearly three years ago, I set out to build the Anet AM8. For those of you that haven't been around 3D printing for that long, or that maybe just don't know about what the AM8 is, the AM8 is basically a full conversion of the cheap Anet A8 printer over to a aluminum frame with options to upgrade just about every component on the printer itself. And I did make a video back in 2018 where I talked about some of the different parts that I had gone with, and I followed it up a few months later with a breakdown but for anyone that had been following the channel for that long, you would know that there's been no updates since. And I've had a couple different viewers reach out over the last few years asking me about what happened to the Anet AM8, and I was really sad to basically not have any additional information to give them. Well, this past year, I had been working from home with the Anet in my field of view, constantly reminding me that, hey, you have neglected me for many years. When are you going to finish this project? And so towards the end of last year, I did sit down. I dedicated the time needed to at least get it to the point where I am calling it completed. And today we are going to give this project its uh, it's time to shine or it's moment of glory before we can finally lay it at rest. And so in today's video, we will cover sort of what some of the delays were and why it took me so long, um, how the project went and you know what the components we ended up using because some of the things that I had talked about in the initial video were swapped out. For anybody that has been following the channel for a long period of time that has been wondering about this uh, AM8, this video is for you. And without further ado, let's get right into today's video. So starting off, why did it take me three years to complete this project? Well, around the time I made the initial video of the parts I had sourced for it, as well as the teardown, I actually ended up moving to be closer to work. And so in that process, I had a ton of stuff in the room that I was renting out, which got jumbled into boxes. And when I got to my next place, we were only there for a year before moving again. So things got jumbled up even more. And so it was a little bit of, I didn't even know where all the different things were I needed for this project. Secondly, I don't think it's any surprise that I am known to take on a bit more projects than I probably should. And the Anet AM8 is just one of the few projects that I have started that I have not fully completed due to that. When I started the AM8 build, I was super excited to take this project that had already spent so much time modding the original Anet A8 and to just sort of take it to the next level. But as time progressed and I started doing other projects, it became less and less of a priority. And on top of that, some of the components I had originally sourced, like the Arduino and Ramps uh, Mega Board, just seemed archaic with all the new boards that had come out since I originally had like kind of ordered or put together the bill of materials. All right, now that we've gotten the excuses out of the way, let's talk about the actual build or the project itself. The build itself was a ton of fun, and it was really similar to any of the other earlier full kits that I did on this channel. The last year or two, at least, of 3D printers haven't really been kits anymore. They come mostly assembled, and so this was almost like a tribute to the earlier days where when you ordered a 3D printer kit, that's actually what you got. It was just bolts and screws and uh, aluminum and different electronics that you had to spend many, many, many hours putting together, and the Anet AM8 was just like that. Because I wasn't just converting the Anet A8 directly to the AM8, which is basically just the aluminum frame and the printed components, I was actually upgrading most all of the parts on the printer to this AM8. It was a bit of a trailblazing experience. There is a PDF guide, and certainly if you were just going to be converting from acrylic to aluminum and using all the printed parts, it'd be a bit more straightforward, but that wasn't the case for me. As I was progressing through this conversion, seeing the Anet A8 get its facelift to the AM8 was incredibly exciting. And like I said, it reminded me of the good old days of 3D printing when things were not nearly as straightforward and there was a lot of head scratching and just trying to figure out which part connects to what. One aspect of this build that definitely took the longest was the wiring. Not that the wiring was difficult, but because these different components weren't necessarily meant to work with each other, I had to cut and snip and crimp and uh, connect cables together to make sure that they were at least the correct length or extend some. And so that took quite a bit of time, but it was also pretty rewarding and not something that I have to do very often. So I did enjoy that. This was also the most that I had soldered in years and really took me back to 10 years ago when I was installing mod chips into game consoles. Soldering is something that I have used many times over the years with 3D printing for things like adding different fans, adding LEDs, or in this instance, shortening or lengthening cables. And I would say that honestly, for electronics or 3D printing projects, soldering is probably one of the most valuable skills that you can have. 
When I got my first soldering iron, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. And unfortunately, I did break quite a few things back then going through the learning process. And over the years, I've had a lot of viewers reach out wanting to do a specific upgrade or a mod to either a printer or something else, even some of my older viewers from game consoles. But a lot of them have been turned away when they see that they need to use a soldering iron out of fear just like me earlier on, that they might end up damaging something. Eight years ago, I covered a few different soldering irons on the channel from SRA Solder that I really enjoyed using. They reached out to me a few months ago, letting me know that they had put together an awesome PDF guide with its sole purpose to give you the information needed to be able to pick up and learn how to solder as easy as possible. I was blown away by the level of information that was in the guide, and I wish that I had had access to it when I originally started off. From there, we began discussing the ideas of creating an affordable kit to get you up and running with soldering, and I'm thrilled to announce that this kit is alive and available. Now, there are a few options in this kit depending on your specific wants, but my goal was to put together a kit with quality parts that would be perfect for you to dive into soldering. The Solder and Flux is US made, and in addition to the PDF, they have some great additional resources on their site to ensure your success. Also, a portion of each kit sale will go directly to supporting the channel. So if you do want to find out more about the kits or even just check out the PDF that I mentioned, which is absolutely amazing, I will place links down below in the description so that way you can do so. Like I mentioned, I did cover all the parts that I originally sourced for this conversion in a video from 2018, but I did want to cover the couple of things that I did swap out. So the board that was the 8-bit ramps and Arduino board, which I'd originally sourced, not that there's anything wrong with it, but because of how inexpensive a lot of other 3D printing boards have become, I decided to go a different route. And I had a 32-bit Lurge K board with TMC2209 silent drivers and a touchscreen that replaced the old RepRap style kind of rotary screen as well as the ramps and Arduino board. I did end up reusing all of the original stepper motors for the ANET A8. However, I added motor dampeners to the X and the Y axes. Truth be told, I got those when I was originally planning on installing the ramps and Arduino board, which did not have silent stepper motor drivers. And with the TMC 2209s, I would say it is overkill. As for the hot end, it is running an E3DV6 style hot end with a Bowden configuration. The extruder is an aluminum MK8 style extruder that I did get back in 2018, I think off of Amazon. The extruder made a lot more sense in 2018 than it did today. There are a lot of better extruders out there that are pretty inexpensive, but it's what I had purchased for this, so I figured I would put it to use, and it's proven itself to be good enough for at least basic materials like PLA and PETG. Next to the hot end, I wired in a BL Touch for automatic bed leveling, and I am using the original bed that came on the printer. However, I did add a Wham Bam flex plate system to it using their PEX, which has been fantastic. All of the printed components on the ANET AM8 conversion were done in a black PETG, and it's been a couple of years, so I can't exactly remember the specific PETG used, but I believe it was either Matter Hacker's build or some Overture filament that I'd gotten on sale. As far as the power supply goes, I am using a Cooler Master 500 watt uh, ATX power supply, which is super overkill, but I think at the time I was breaking down one of my old uh, video editing desktops and basically buying everything anew, and it was just sitting off to the side, and I figured, why not put it to use? Overall, I am quite happy with the end result, but I can tell you right now that if I were starting this project from today, the components I would have used would have been completely different. And like I said a moment ago, the main thing I really would like to upgrade is the extruder on this printer, and it is still a 12 volt system, which is what the original ANA A8 was, and I have been super spoiled with a 24 volt system, which has almost become the standard for nearly every 3D printer that I've gotten in. The bed heat up time for a print like PETG, which is just 70C, ends up taking like seven-ish minutes roughly, which might not sound like a lot, but compared to some of my other printers that could hit that in roughly three minutes, it's a little bit annoying at times. And then lastly, the cable management, although the cables are roughly the correct length from me cutting them down and soldering them to size, um, I did need to print a cover for the electronic still. It's inside of its own housing, but I was working on a Fusion 360 design uh, for a different top cover for it, which just didn't get finished. And so that is kind of like the final icing on the cake. For anyone out there that does have an ANET A8 or has been interested in this conversion three years later, I did want to provide some feedback or thoughts on this whole conversion and the process. And like I stated, this was something that was started many, many years ago. And at that time, 
the desktop hobby level 3D printers were nothing like they are today and there were really not very many around that $200 price tag. So doing this conversion to get this really cheap ANA A8 and upgrading almost every aspect of it did make a lot more sense than it does today. I think today you'd be much better off picking up something like an Ender 3, giving you a solid base, um, a much more solid base, and then sort of upgrading from there, which would be a lot easier and a lot less expensive, unless of course you just want to do do the build or do the conversion for the sake of it, which is totally fine. If you are just looking for a really cool 3D printer project, the Voron builds seem to be amazing. Um, in the Modbot Army Discord, there are a couple members in there that are building their own versions of the Voron, which is a super sweet Core XY uh, printer. There's actually a few different variants of it, but that looks like a really cool printer. And if I were to want to just do a kit for the heck of it, that would be the Voron project would be the project that I would be doing today. If you do have the original ANA A8 with the acrylic frame, converting it over to the AM8 with the aluminum frame will definitely make the machine a lot more rigid. And one of my biggest issues with the original ANA A8 amongst the many issues that it had uh, was that it did not stay calibrated. The frame was really easy to tweak, whether it was if you slid the machine over or had to remove a part super, like, you know, put, put a little bit of elbow grease in removing a part since back then I didn't have flex plates the machine would very easily kind of skew and then you'd have to redo all the leveling if you didn't have auto bed leveling. So doing this mod will certainly help to alleviate that, uh, that pain that the original ANA A8 had. And I will say that I was looking at the AM8 to see what parts were originally from the actual ANA A8. And really the only things are the stepper motors, lead screws, original bed, and that may be it. And so you don't have to do all those things. If your goal is just to upgrade and make the machine a bit more rigid, then the aluminum frame and the printing components will, will do that for you. And that is the story of the ANET A8 to ANET AM8 conversion. <laughs> with how much time has passed, I would love to know how many of you have either uh, either started off with an ANET A8 or maybe own one still currently. Back then, again, we were so spoiled now with new printers coming out every single week around the you know, $200 to $300 price range. But back when the ANET A8 came out, there really wasn't anything in its, in its size that uh, was as cheap as it was. I think it was a sub $200 machine or close to the $200 price tag. So um, it was a very popular machine when it came out. And once I did all of the upgrades like the MOSFET board and making sure that the wiring was all dialed in and swapping out some of the safety features like um, making sure thermal runway was enabled, these are all things that uh, certainly are not acceptable by today's standards and shouldn't have been acceptable back then, but I did lay down a lot of very large prints with the ANET A8 and uh, it was certainly a chapter in my 3D printing history or in my 3D printing journey. So if you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that we can finally lay the ANET AM8 project to rest and, and, and I can start working on some of the other projects that I have been neglecting. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there is always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below in the description over to my Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of my existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you guys allowing me to spend more time doing what I love each and every single week, which is making content on this channel. On that note, this has been Dana from ModBot, and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.